just going to throw this out there. Good morning. Um, I'm wondering if anybody else's kids in this season uh, are progressively going to bed later and later uh, and getting up later and later. Because right now it's, it is eerily quiet in, in our house. Um, and <laughs> I was talking to somebody yesterday who told me that uh, when they were growing up, they left their dad. He worked shift work and they went up to grandparents' house, uh, like the mom and all the kids, for a couple of days so he could rest. And like a day into it, the dad, he drove up to the grandparents' house and he grabbed all the kids and he said, you're coming home because it's too quiet. I can't sleep. Uh, and so he brought all the kids back home. Um, so anyway, hey Durham's, uh, good morning everybody. Let me scroll through here and see who's, who's up this morning. Good to see you. Washburns, Lisa, Johnstons, Megan, Pastor Tony, good to see you guys. Elliot, Susan, Strons, Harris's, hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, it's just a little, uh, it's a little quiet. I'm not sure you're going to see anybody walk in this morning because, uh, Man, our kids, they're just snoozing a little more. You know, we've we've laxed the discipline uh, a little bit on uh, bedtime. Anybody else guilty of that? It's just been a little easier to stay up later with our kids and not feel uh, the pressure of, you know, having to leave the house by 7.30. Um, so, you know, when you get up, it's like, you want to wear your pajamas all day? I guess that's fine, too. <laughs> um, hey, Zuzu from uh, Grandparents' House. Hope you're doing well. Good morning. Uh, okay, so today, look, at two verses. I want to talk to you about prayer. The first one's Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And uh, we're actually not going to spend much time in that one because we talked about Philippians uh, back in March and April for a long time. And uh, but I encourage you to go read that. It's a great one to memorize. Um, and, and really commandment to not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer. In petition with, thanksg with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. But today, really, I want to focus on um, this verse in John 15, 7. This promise that's uh, that's really encouraging to me as you think about prayer yesterday we talked about the word of god second timothy 3 16 and uh joshua 1 8 and i've uh, been just recently trying to give you some great uh verses to memorize to meditate on that uh are, are just tied to some different topics um and and so last week we looked at galatians 2 20 and second corinthians 5 17 uh just talking about how your new creation in Christ, Christ is the center of your life, what that looks like, and then obedience to Christ and prayer. Um, today, prayer, yesterday, the word. So, um, so I want to read John 15. This is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. John 15, it's a great uh, encouragement to pray. Um, and I think it's a great promise really built on yesterday's verses about the word of God. Um, and... Let me let me read uh, verse 7. That's the one in the description there. This is what Jesus says. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. Uh, that's a pretty great uh, promise right there. Uh, and, and I love that uh, Jesus makes that for us. It seems a little bit carte blanche. You know, we can just ask for everyone. Well, well yes. Uh, but it's conditional on remaining in Christ. So what does that mean? Well, let me read this chapter. He says, I'm the true vine. My father's the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Anybody ever been pruned out there? Uh, that's not necessarily a fun process. Uh, 
you know, even this season, how many of you feel like in this season of quarantine, you're being pruned? Anybody? Anybody want to comment on some things God is pruning from your life right now? Um, things that you thought you needed, things that uh, were maybe a crutch in your life, uh, things that you uh, didn't want to let go of, uh, and God is pruning some of those things in us right now. Uh, man, there's so many things that it's easy to uh, lean on in our life, busyness, good things, activities that can easily become our identity, can easily become our comfort, uh, our routines, and and then we all of a sudden uh, enter into this very unique season we're in, self-quarantining and stay-at-home orders and shelter in place, all these things that we've never even heard of before. Um, and then God starts cutting things away from our lives. Uh, yeah, needs and wants. That's a big one, man. There's things I thought I needed. I really just wanted. Um, and, and so what a great thing though, because I think a lot of times we get stuff cut away from us. We get frustrated. Like, Come on, God, I, I wanted that. I needed that. Don't you know, I, I've got to have that. And, uh, but just like, I mean, we've, we've recently pruned our rose bushes outside and it's amazing. Every year we prune these things. And next thing you know, there's even more buds on there. There's more blossoms and flowers uh, after we cut away, you know, half of these great fruitful looking branches, all right, that are full of leaves and buds. And then you prune it back and there's even more. I'm looking outside at one right now. There's even more buds after you prune it back. And, um, and, and so what a great promise that God prunes us when we're fruitful right? It's, it's only that the branch that bears fruit that gets pruned. Definitely, that's counterintuitive. That is, that is not um, something that the world thinks and the world does. Um, and so, verse 3, you are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me. And that's a beautiful promise right there, just that, that we are righteous in Christ. Um, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Uh, when we trust his word, when we put our faith in him, um, I mean, we, we are uh, delivered out of darkness into light. We're clean. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Um, that's a really hard verse for me because there's a lot of times... I feel like I'm bearing fruit and I'm doing it all on my own. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's like, no, man, God, that was good. I just I just accomplished something. I just did this really well. That was a great uh, thing I did. You know, I'm bearing fruit and really it's all on my own effort. You ever been there where, I mean, you just put a lot of effort into something and it works. Like it goes great. You know, you did it. You're bearing fruit, it feels like anyway, um, but it's it's not it's not fruit that remains. Uh, it's it's like fruit in our own strength, our own flesh, um, and and that's not the kind of fruit that God wants us to bear. That that He wants to produce through us. And so this is a great promise. And then He says, "I'm the vine, you're the branches." Again. If you remain in me, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he's like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. That's our verse today. Great one to memorize. John fifteen seven. This it is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So, so here, here's a great promise in this passage, is that God never asks us to bear fruit. Uh, our job is not to uh, produce 
fruit. It's not to produce things and accomplish things and get things done. Um, which I don't know about you, but that that's a great truth that takes a lot of weight off of my shoulders because uh, I'm a doer um, and and I like to do things and accomplish things and check things off the checklist. Uh, but the commandment here is not to bear fruit. The commandment is to remain in Christ. And the result of us just simply remaining in Christ is that he bears fruit through us. The result, the promise, as we remain in him and his words remain in us, is that we're going to bear fruit. Uh, you know, it's crazy. As I'm, as I'm raising kids, and every day it's scarier and scarier how much my kids are like me. Uh, anybody else had those those moments where you're going, like, I am looking in a mirror right now at this this boy, because that's me. Like, it's a it's a little bit scary looking at a mini me um, who acts like you, talks like you, has. Uh, the same tendencies and values and, you know, it's, it's exciting. Like I, I like most of it. <laughs> uh, and there's some things about myself I don't like. Um, but it's this idea that, you know, if we're around God, his word is in us. We're going to take on who he is. We're going to become like him whether we want to or not, I mean, it's just, it's going to happen. It's like the, you know, osmosis kind of thing uh, where, where we're sharing <laughs> across these, uh, you know, ourselves. I'm not going to try to explain the process of osmosis right now, <laughs> uh, but I, I could have explained that in college a lot better than right now. But you become like this other person. Like when, when we're in God's word, God's word is in us. It's those two things. It's not just me, it's, it's him and me. I'm in him, his words in me. Then we're going to bear fruit. Like that, that's the promise. What a beautiful promise. We become like him. And then he says, ask whatever you wish. That's a crazy uh, invitation for us to accept right there. Ask whatever you wish. Really? I can ask anything I want, God? Yeah. Why does he say that? Because his words are in us, right? If his word is in me and I'm in him, my desires are going to be his desires. Uh, Nicole, you're being so mean to me right now. Explain osmosis. Maybe tomorrow I'll draw a diagram. I used to be able to. Uh, <laughs> so God's saying, look, if you're in me and my word's in you, and you're asking uh, based on you being in me and, and me being in you, of, of course I'm going to give you whatever you want because you're going to be asking what I want already. Um, you know, I love that the psalmist says, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And we've talked about this before that um, that doesn't mean he gives me whatever I want. It means he gives me the want. Like when my delight is in God, my desires become him. He, he gives me my desire. Like my desires are changed based on what I'm delighting in. And so, uh, so that's, that's this idea here. I want you to see that as, you, as we pray, there's this invitation to pray, and we're going to get whatever we ask for in prayer if we're in Christ, his word is in us. In other words, we're praying primarily his word. Our desires are his desires. And so this morning, let me just challenge you, and golly, I've already gone really long. I'm sorry about that. Um, to just stay in the word, let his word stay in you. If you don't know what to pray, pray his word. Pray the Lord's Prayer. Uh, go through the epistles and pray what Paul prayed. Pray the Psalms. Pray uh, Proverbs. Um, let, let God's word be what you pray, uh, but pray. And, um, and and let's bear fruit in this season. Man, that's a whole other thing. I'd love to maybe dive into this passage more, just thinking about the context of COVID-19 and everything that we're in, going through right now. Um, maybe that's a sermon for another day, but hey, I love you guys. Um, let's keep praying Second Chronicles 7, 14 and uh, humbling ourselves, turning from uh, our wicked ways. And, and maybe the thing that we turn from today is just uh, 
that we haven't remained in Christ. His word hasn't remained in us. And, and I hope that his word will remain in you. You'll take these two verses on prayer, tuck them away, let them be a reminder to uh, pray God's word back to him. So God bless you. Lord, help us to uh, seek you today and uh, let, let us find you, Father. And uh, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. See you guys.